Hello everybody, it's been a while since I last streamed. I'm very sorry for taking basically a month now for, off from streaming. <laughs> uh, I, I really did not mean to uh, not stream for this long, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll address everything, you know, at a later time. Uh, I already did a YouTube video update uh, talking about everything that I've been going through lately, so uh, for now, let's just focus on talking about WandaVision. Okay, so I have been doing these things uh, on my YouTube channel every week, even though I haven't been going live with them. Uh, but tonight, uh, I'm actually going to be doing this live. So, um, yeah, finally, right? So, um, actually, I forgot to uh, set up something here. Uh, before going live, so let me just do that real quick. Okay, there we go. Now, let's get talking about the latest episode, which, um, I'll admit that this episode was a, a, a bit slower than, than the other ones. Um, like, all of the major stuff happens at the end. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, for, for the majority of uh, this discussion, I'm more or less just going to be going through uh, what happened in the episode and not so much uh, what the potential meaning behind them could be. Um, hang on, let, let me check my phone. So, uh, basically, so just like the last episode, uh, this episode started like um, a normal sitcom. Uh, and this is probably going to be the last episode that starts that way, uh, since, uh, because of the events of the ending, um, most likely they're going to drop the whole sitcom facade anyway, um, and, uh, you know, WandaVision is more or less just going to be, you know, just portrayed as, uh, an actual event happening in the MCU rather than a, a show within a show, so to speak, um, but yeah, uh, this episode uh, more or less uh, plays out inside of Wanda's reality as uh, a normal sitcom. Uh, and we've been through all of the decades already, so now all that's left is the 2000s. And uh, this one uh, is, seems to be specifically uh, based on Modern Family, uh, which has no laugh track. So, you know, no laugh track in, in this episode. Um, so... Uh, the thing about this episode is that um, Wanda basically just wants to be alone <laughs> because of uh, everything that's happened so far. Um, the intro just displays Wanda's name over and over again, uh, signifying that uh, she just wants to be alone. Although, at the end of it, at the intro sequence, it does still say WandaVision. So, um, it's not like Vision's completely out of the picture. But still, you know, the fact that, uh, that, that they just show Wanda's name a bunch of times and there's no lyrics to the theme song this time, yeah. <sighs> so, um, Wanda's, um, if you remember what happened last episode, um, she, um, Wanda, uh, expanded the, the size of her reality, expanded the hex. Um, so, uh, you remember what I said about last episode, you know, when something gets bigger, it requires more power to, uh, function. So, uh, now that the hex has increased in size, um, you know, Wanda needs more of her power t in order to main maintain control of the hex. And, you know, there, there's some other factors, uh, Contributing to the hex glitching out, falling apart, whatever, as well. But, um, you know, um, we'll get to that later. Um, but, but yeah, basically, um, you know, Wanda's reality is glitching out. You know, her kids come upstairs to wake her up, you know, because, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing video games downstairs and the controllers keep changing to controllers of other consoles and then they eventually turn to Uno cards, you know? So that's how, you know, this whole episode gets started. You know, Wanda doesn't want to get out of bed. 
undoubtedly because she's exhausted from using all her power to expand the hex at the end of the last episode. So, uh, of course, she'd be exhausted from that. You know, like, like she's literally so tired that she didn't even take off her Halloween costume <laughs> after she got home because, cause, you know, she takes off the bed sheets and we see we see that she's still wearing her Halloween costume from last night. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, you know, Wanda's reality is glitching out. She finally gets out of bed and goes downstairs to make herself breakfast and, you know, the milk changes. <laughs> when she makes herself breakfast, so of course she sniffs her milk to make sure that's not bad, you know, before having her breakfast, which is understandable because, uh, you know, if I saw my milk transform right before my eyes, i question whether or not if it's safe to eat too. <laughs> so, um, as, um, you know, she's eating her breakfast, and, and whatnot, you know. Um, Agnes comes by and uh, offers Wanda some help with uh, taking care of the kids. Wait, I, I think this happens later, actually, because I, I remember that um, Wanda's kids... Uh, ask about, you know, Wanda's brother, uh, Pietro, Quicksilver, and, um, she, she basically says that she doesn't have any answers for, you know, what exactly is going on here, you know, she says that, um, Pietro is not actually Pietro, which could be foreshadowing, or it could be just, you know, Wanda no longer feels that it's actually her brother, because, um, <laughs> You know, he said something at the la at the end of the last episode about how, you know, Vision can't die twice, <laughs> which is why, um, you know, the kids are asking about him in, in the first place. And it's possibly because of that comment alone that uh, Wanda no longer trusts that Pietro is actually Pietro. So, so yeah, um, Agnes comes by and offers to take care of the kids. You know, because Wanda's stressed out, and she doesn't know what's going on. And like I said, her reality is falling apart. Um, but outside of the hex, uh, we uh, we see uh, the new sword base that's being uh, set up, and they're keeping track of what's going on, you know, with the hex. And uh, uh, this time, they're really far away from it, just in case the hex expands again, you know. They don't want to be as close to it as they were before because of that, you know, because they don't really know what's going on inside the hex. It could expand again at any time, so, excuse me, it needs to be a considerable distance away from it now in order to give themselves enough time to get away from it in case that happens again. Um, so, the reason why they don't know what's going on inside the hex now is because apparently the broadcast is no longer being sent out. Which could be Wanda's doing, possibly, but it could also not be Wanda's doing because of, you know, we'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, if you've seen the episode, then you should already know, you know, where I'm going with this. So, back inside the hex, we see that um, Vision has fully recovered from being almost destroyed after he tried to leave the hex at at the end of the last episode, um, he's at where the old sword base was now, which was transformed into a circus when <laughs> um, the hex was expanded. Um, he wakes up and he sees Darcy there. Uh, she's an escape artist now because uh, she was handcuffed to a car or something uh, when uh, the hex expanded. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's part of the whole reality reshaping things to, you know, fit what what's going on inside of uh, Wanda's world and, and whatnot. So, uh, Darcy breaks out of her chains and, you know, of course she thinks that she's part of this circus that's been created now uh, because of uh, Wanda's brainwashing as a result of, you know, being part of this reality and everything. Uh, but uh, Vision is trying to talk to her, get her to 
you know, ask her questions about what's going on and everything. But uh, of course, she she thinks she's part of the circus. So, <laughs> you know, he, he mistakes she mistakes everything that Vision is saying to her as, uh, you know, <laughs> him asking her out on a date. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, but uh. Yeah, uh, so I, so that's where that scene ends up to that point. Um, after uh, the scene where, um, you know, Agnes offers to take care of the kids with Wanda, um, Monica meets her contact that we've been talking about, you know, ever since, I think, it's episode four or episode five, that... You know, she first mentioned that she knows somebody who would be perfect to handle this job. And uh, as they're driving to meet this person, um, Jimmy is uh, reading to Monica that Darcy made it through the last firewall that she was talking about. And apparently Hayward's secret project is called Cataract, and that he was trying to uh, reactivate Vision, but he couldn't until Wanda herself brought Vision back to life. Um, so... I, I tried to look this up, but apparently there's nothing in Marvel Comics that is called Cataract or whatever. But um, if you know what uh, uh, Cataract in real life is, then, then you'll probably understand um, that this does not bode well for, for Vision. Um, um, so ba basically, a, a Cataract is like... Um, it's like something that it's like something that grows in your eye that um that causes your vision to be blurry and um uh to put it one way um you see if you see the way uh, vision's eyes look um when when uh we we see vision for how he actually looks if you remember back in episode 4 um after um, Wanda throws Monica out of her reality. Um, you know, she's lost focus because, you know, she she's uh, uh, thrown, you know, as I mentioned before, when, when she loses focus of maintaining control of, of her reality, um, that's when, you know, things like uh, what we've been seeing in this episode happen and when, you know, people's, when she, when people are no longer being mind controlled uh, by Wanda, and um, which is what led to Monica getting thrown out in the first place. Um, so uh, another side effect of that is uh, when 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 Wanda loses control of her reality, she sees things for what they actually are, as opposed to how she's making them appear. Thus, Vision appears as the corpse he was uh, after Thanos killed him rather than how we've been seeing Vision appear. So uh, because of that, um, the way Vision's eyes look, that, that's basically what a cataract is um, in, in Vision's true form. So yeah, um, it seems like um, what they're definitely trying to bring Vision back to weaponize him, and that's why they've been keeping track of Vision um, in, you know, where he's been inside of the hex. I mean, he already had the tracking device uh, implanted in him. He was built with it, so of course they were going to utilize it to see, you know, where he's been going, you know, after he got reactivated. Um, so definitely uh, they got something nefarious up their sleeves uh, with whatever it is that they're planning to do with Vision, you know, just based off of the name of the project. Um, so, um, so finally, um, Mark and Jimmy arrive to, to meet their contact, and it's not anybody, you know, not, not a significant character, you know, at the very least. Um, it's basically, um, so one of the things that is suspected here is that it's not the, the person that she was talking about that they're meeting in person, but but rather just a, a team of people that, you know, that were, was assigned to meet them at the location there instead. Uh, and they, they, they brought her the vehicle that, that uh, she said that she needed 
in episode five, I think it was, um, when she talked about, okay, I'm going to need this for radiation and this for that and this for that. And it's got to be on wheels, you know, like she basically asked for a super protected fallout shelter on wheels. And that's the vehicle that they've built for her, um, very quickly, I might add, uh, given the short amount of time that all of this has happened in, um, and, uh, yeah, that she, so Solanaka is basically just, she's going to use this to try to get inside the Hex again. Um, so, uh, back inside of the Hex, um, we see, uh, we see Vision again at the circus, and, uh, she, he, he does the, the, the mine thing that he did to the other people to bring Darcy back to her true self, and, uh, they, you know, now that she's back to her true self, she's able to tell Vision everything that's been going on up to this point, including, you know, things about Vision's past that he can't remember. Uh, evidently, um, by design, uh, because of what I'm going to be talking about later. So, uh, Vision and Darcy take a van, um, and they drive away from the circus, you know, and as they make their way back to Wanda's house, you know, Darcy's going to tell Vision about everything that's been going on and whatnot. So at Wanda's house, things keep getting worse. Things keep falling apart, you know. Even, you know, if she changes things back to the, the way she wants, you know, it just keeps glitching out. It just keeps, you know... <laughs> And she doesn't know why her reality keeps falling apart. And, you know, throughout the episode, they've been having these, like, interview sessions. Like, like they'll cut away from what, what whatever's happening in the episode. And, and there'll be, like, a one-on-one -on -one interview session with uh, <laughs> Wanda or Agnes. And, you know, they'll be talking about, you know, they'll be giving their thoughts on what, what's been going on. And in this scene in particular, the, the interviewer... Yo, thanks for the follow. So in this particular scene, um, uh, the interviewer asks Wanda, you know, do you think this is all happening because you deserve it? And, and, and she's like, you're not supposed to be talking. So that's another sign that uh, Wanda's losing control of her reality. Um, and uh, <laughs> the in-universe ad uh, for, for this episode is for an antidepressant called Nexus. Now, this could be referring to two things. Uh, in the comics, the, the Nexus of all realities is a place that acts as a gateway uh, for the multiverse. You know, all the different universes that could possibly happen, you know, in Marvel Comics and whatnot. And uh, it could also be referring to Nexus beings, which, you know, are these supremely powerful beings that are capable of controlling probability and thus the future and, you know, things like that, you know, the powers of, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's definitely one of the things that I'll be getting to, uh, later on in this discussion. That's, uh, that's a very big, uh, major part of what could possibly happen in this show. Uh, and precisely because of, you know, what I'm talking about right now, uh, the Nexus beings. In the comics, Wanda, uh, Wanda Maximoff is a Nexus being, so uh, through this ad, they are possibly telling us that Wanda in the MCU is a Nexus being. Either that or she's becoming one, because uh, one of the things uh, about Nexus beings is that uh, they are the focal points or anchor of their reality. And one of the things that's said in the in-universe ad for this episode is that uh, the Nexus antidepressant can anchor you back to your reality. So, regardless of what it means, uh, the Nexus ad is definitely uh, referring to the multiverse. So, that's something that's very excited to look forward to in, um, yeah... Yeah, the, the, the show is based off of House of M, and it, it, it's one of the best stories they ever made, and it's and it's definitely made for a, a good show so far. It's very much, um, yeah, <laughs> each episode has been 
making me look forward to what's going to happen next more than the last. And uh, this episode is definitely no exception, especially since, you know, because of the ending of this episode. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that uh, sooner or later. Um, so, um, in Agatha's house, uh, or Agnes, I should say, um, Wiccan says that she likes it there. Uh, he likes it there. Um, because it's quiet, and that Magnus is quiet on the inside. Um, and, uh, and, uh, Speed asks Agnes if, you know, their mother is gonna be okay, and, uh, Agnes says that Wanda can do anything, which is literally true now, because, you know, before she she more or less just had telekinetic powers and, and, and mind control. But but now as we've seen in the show, she she can alter reality, she can make things out of nothing, she can control time, you know, so definitely she is uh capable of pretty much doing whatever she wants with excuse me, which will definitely lead to uh, interesting things. Um Yeah, that that is something that, that the uh changed from the comics, uh, but, uh, considering, uh, everything that we've seen, uh, in the show so far, uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, things like that changed. Uh, actually, um, that's, that's one of the things that I, I'm going to be talking about later on, because uh, I have a theory for what could actually be, be going on with that, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's probably the most plausible thing that, that that's possibly what, what what's going on here. Uh, obviously, time will tell, but uh, I, I have what is what I think the most plausible theory for, for what's going on with that in the MCU. Um, so, uh, um, so I, we're outside of the hex again, and we see Monica preparing to enter the hex using the vehicle that she commissioned... Uh, and uh, as she tries to enter the hex uh, with it, uh, we, we see that uh, the expansion of the hex also made it more dense, so she's unable to get through uh, and, and enter the hex. Uh, and the vehicle gets shot out as half of a pickup truck. Like, like half of it is a pickup truck and half of it is the, the vehicle it originally was. So then Monica decides that she can enter the hex by herself and tries to go in it alone. And she actually manages to get through, and we see how painful it is uh, for her to, uh, you know, get inside the hex, especially now that it's denser than it was before, you know. It, it's like, she, it looks like she's, like, being torn apart, you know, with her different uh, selves, uh, you know, and she more or less is, has to put a lot of effort into keeping herself held together in order to... Uh, get through, but undoubtedly because of the powers that she now has from being in, in the Hex and outside of it, um, she's able to pass through and, uh, you know, she takes off the astronaut outfit that she had on when, when she tried to drive into the Hex and, and she's wearing a costume that more or less looks like her Spectrum outfit from the comics. And it looks great, honestly. Uh, and also, we, we, we see the world from her point of view, and uh, we can see the energy waves that um, are being given off from this reality. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure uh, this is going to be the last episode where it, they're going to do the whole uh, sitcom thing. You know, I'm pretty sure that the next two episodes are, are just going to be, you know straight MCU content, you know, the world inside of WandaVision is just going to be uh, shown as an event that's actually happening and, and not as a sitcom, you know, because the jig is up but by now, right? You know, like, we, we more or less knowing, you know, what's actually been happening, you know, at this point. So th there's no need for them to keep up the sitcom facade anymore. I'm pretty sure all of it is, is going to be dropped uh, going forward. Maybe they'll... Uh, have a theme show for, for the new character, uh, but that's about it. Um, I'll get back to that uh, uh, later. <laughs> so, um, as Vision and, and Darcy try to get back to Wanda, uh, they're stuck in the middle of the road, um, and, um, you know, 
this seems to be Wanda's doing, um, uh, but it's probably, um, you know, who, um, because of the ending. Um, in fact, it, it most likely is uh, that person at the end instead. Um, yeah, that, that, that's actually, um, the story behind that is, is very interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it all later. It, it's a little... Uh, complicated. I think it had something to do with, um, I, I'm not even entirely sure, um, how that all came to be myself. Um, but, but it has to do with like, like movie rights and stuff and, and Marvel wanting to use the characters in the movies, despite the fact that they originate from X-Men and whatnot. It's, it's all very complicated. So, so yeah. Darcy and Vision come to a red light, and, and just as it turns green, you know, a working crew comes along, and, and they, like, work on the light and whatnot. And uh, all this time, you know, Darcy's been telling Vision about his past and, you know, where he's been, you know, what what went on in his life uh, before uh, uh, WandaVision happened. And, uh, you know, even telling him that uh, he used to be an AI called Jarvis uh, and, you know, became Vision, you know, through the events of Age of Ultron and whatnot. So, um, uh, Monica is then seen, uh, getting to Wanda, and, uh, we, we see a brief scene of, of Wanda taking some pills, which are probably, um, those Nexus antidepressants that we saw in Ad 4 earlier. So, that might be, um, a contributing factor in how Wanda is able to create and control this reality of hers uh, in this show. So Monica gets to Wanda and, and starts uh, talking to her, trying to get her to calm down and realize that what she's doing is wrong. And uh, Wanda says uh, a lot of things that uh, possibly for foreshadow upcoming events, like, you know, Monica tells Wanda not to be the villain that Hayward already thinks she is, and, and Wanda says, maybe I already am. So, you know, that that could uh, potentially uh, lead to uh, uh, Wanda being the villain in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, um, which is the, the big rumor that's going around with that movie. Uh, and then we, we see Vision and Darcy uh, stuck in the middle of the road again. And uh, Vision remembers that he can fly, so he doesn't allow himself to be blocked by the impediments anymore, and, and he just goes and flies straight to Wanda's house. Um, and Darcy says that she'll just catch up whenever. Yeah, I, I hope Shuma Gorath is in a future movie as well. He, he's one of the characters that I'm looking forward to seeing the most in a Marvel movie. Uh, it, it very much could happen, uh, but... Uh, it definitely isn't going to be happening anytime soon. If, if, if anything, it, it probably won't happen for at least 10 years, which is a very long time from now. But still, if it ends up happening at all, you know, I'll certainly be happy. Yeah, uh, Modoc is, is more understandable for, for him not showing up yet because it, it's, he's certainly one of the more ridiculous villains in the MCU, or, or rather in Marvel Comics, you know, so... For them to do an accurate version of Morak in the MCU, that <laughs> it would more or less need to be a <laughs> a big CG face on a rocket with limbs. So, I mean, they, they they could potentially do it in a way that that works, but you never know. <laughs> it, certainly, he's uh, more difficult to do than than the normal looking human villains that we've had so far. But, you know, the fact that he has appeared in video games, you know, in the last few years, uh, uh, certainly, uh, does hint at the possibility that that Modoc will appear eventually, you know, especially since he was in the Avengers game that, that just came out last year. So, yeah. Some years will go by faster than you think. Uh, maybe. Uh, certainly, uh, if, if they get, if, if they keep, uh, producing more content, you know, and, and putting out 
a lot of content yearly like like they have been with the exception to last year you know because of the pandemic then then 10 years can definitely not seem as long you know as long as we, we keep having new stuff to look forward to and, and whatnot and and they keep giving us new things to talk about and things like that so certainly uh 10 years can can not feel like like 10 years yeah so maybe you're right yeah we definitely <laughs> need a new Marvel versus capcom that that uh people would actually be uh wanting to play uh i'm actually su surprised that uh I'm pretty sure if we ever do get a, a new Marvel vs. Capcom, that Wanda and Vision are going to be playable in it, or I would hope so at least. I mean, they, they've got to be after this show, right? Certainly after uh, the popularity of this show and whatnot, they, they would definitely make them playable in the next Marvel vs. Capcom game, should we ever get one. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let me see. Where, where was I? I was talking about... Okay, so Monica was was talking to Wanda, trying to, you know, get her to come around and whatnot. And then um, uh, Agnes uh, sees what's going on, you know, next door, and uh, she comes along and takes Wanda away. But but she doesn't take Wanda inside of her house. Uh, she takes her inside of Agnes's house. Um, excuse me. So there, there's definitely a, a purpose behind her um, doing that, as opposed to a. Uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, there's definitely a reason for her doing that, as opposed to taking Wanda back inside of her house. And uh, of course, we we learn about it, you know, very soon after. Um, so. Um, what happens is uh, Wanda is brought inside of Agnes's house. You know, she she sees some unfinished sandwiches or whatever, and <laughs> yo <yoga. laughs> I was surprised to see a, a, an actual TV show uh, playing on the television. Yo Gamma Gabba, which is a, a kids show, uh, but uh, Wanda notices that that her kids aren't around, so she asks Agnes, you know, where are they? And Agnes is. Uh, Agnes says uh, that they're playing in the basement, so Wanda goes downstairs, uh, you know, to see the kids, and um, in instead, uh, what we see is this really creepy-looking thing. It, it's like a, a basement that, that's, like, covered in, in, in roots and stuff, you know, and it looks like a witch's basement, and uh, we actually see the dark hole, which is... Something that was suspected to be involved uh, in in this show uh, because of uh, the connections that the Darkhold has to uh, Cthon and 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 the Dark Dimension, which you know, uh, Cthon is a being that is connected to to Wanda in the comics. You know that that's how she uses chaos magic and whatnot. Cthon has used Wanda uh, in the comics to try to take over the world and whatnot. You know. But of course, you know, it's comic books, so he's never succeeded or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, uh, the Darkhold was something that was suspected to be part of WandaVision uh, since uh, so 4 or 5, I think it was. And um, this episode confirms that uh, the Darkhold is indeed uh, involved in the, you know, it, it certainly had a hand in, in the creation of everything here. Um and whatnot, um, and then Agnes comes along and reveals that she's Agatha Harkness, and then her amazing theme song comes on, revealing that it was her that was behind, you know, all the things that, that went wrong in the show so far, and it's, it's great, it, it's so amazing, like, like, I had to hear it again, and like, after I got done watching this latest episode, it, it was so, it was just so good, <laughs> So, uh, there's a lot of key things to take away from here. Um, so, uh, in the first place, um, we, we, we've just been introduced to her. So, we don't know, you know, what her motivations are or anything like that. We don't know what her plan is. We don't know why she's doing all of this. Um, but, but we can infer that um, 
when Wanda uh, denied to Vision earlier that uh, she's been controlling everything, uh, that, that she was actually being truthful and that, um, you know, that it was in fact uh, Agnes who was doing it. She was at least playing some part in uh, c controlling uh, this reality that, that, that Wanda's created. Um, um, and what, you know, what role she, she's played uh, up to this point, we don't really know. Uh, but um, definitely uh, she's had a hand in some part of it, you know. Um, she was obviously uh, pretending um, to, to, to be um, under one's influence um, in, in the previous episode when, when she was talking to Vision. Um, that much I suspected because, you know, up until that point, she uh, had seemed to be playing along, you know, just fine. And uh, but also made it very much aware of the fact that uh, she, she knew that uh, Wanda was controlling everything and whatnot. So... Um, yeah, the, this whole thing ha has just been a big ruse that uh, that Agatha has has uh, set up. Um, so uh, w one of the things that that we see uh, just before Agatha's theme song plays is uh, she she uses this purple magic to apparently um, control Wanda or whatever. So uh, one of the things that I suspected before was that. Um, it's possible that um, Wanda was being mind controlled when when she uh, went to the sword base to take back Vision's body. Um, uh, so I think uh, the fact that we saw Agatha do something uh, that looked like mind control to Wanda uh, confirms that. Uh, but we won't know for absolute certainty uh, until maybe next episode when um, they'll start answering some more questions potentially um and um so yeah um one of the things that that um so so to get back to the thing that you mentioned earlier about uh magneto possibly appearing on the show here's what what, what i think will actually happen and it's what the mo what i think is the most plausible uh theory um in fact i, I think i said this last week actually i might be repeating myself right now um, I think, um, what will happen, um, is that, um, Wanda's father, uh, will appear in the show, but it won't be Magneto, but it will be played as by the same actor who plays the young version of Magneto in the Fox X-Men movies. That's what I think is most likely going to happen, um. Either way, it'll, it'll be a crazy thing that that'll happen or whatnot. But uh, because we now know that that uh, Agatha has been behind everything, um, it's possible that that it won't actually be Wanda's father. It it, it could be potentially uh, somebody else made to look like him, um, you know, to manipulate Wanda or or whatever. Again, we we, we don't really know uh, what Agatha is up to. We, we we've just been told now that uh, that that she's been the one behind everything so we don't really know anything about you know what she's going to do or what she's planning to do or anything like that so you know the potential f for you know there's just so many ways that that the next few episodes could play out you know that uh it's hard to uh come up with a concrete theory on on what could potentially happen and uh excuse me, what Magneto potentially showing up uh, in WandaVision could, could actually mean. Uh, because, um, so this is the first episode uh, of WandaVision that actually has a mid credit scene, and it shows um, Monica finding a, a back entrance to Agatha's basement, and then Quicksilver shows up and uh, finds her, so... And uh, he had been completely absent up to this point. So um, the fact that he, he shows up at the last second to basically stop Monica from, you know, finding Agatha and Wanda, you know, that to me says that um, this isn't actually a Quicksilver, but, but rather, uh, well, 
I don't know who it could be, uh, really. Uh, but it's definitely not Wanda's brother. Not not at all. Um, it, so one of the theories uh, that's been going around is that uh, Agnes's uh, husband, um, Ralph, uh, which she uh, keeps mentioning, but we, we haven't seen him. Um, it, one of the theories is that uh, Ralph is uh, actually Mephisto. So uh, what I'm thinking is, is that... Um, Quicksilver is actually Ralph. Um, now, um, whether or not that, that also means that he's Mephisto, I don't think so. Um, because, you know, Mephisto, at least in the comics, is way more powerful than, than Agatha Harkness. But, um, so, you know, why, why would he, uh, you know, more or less be an underling of, of Agatha or... I mean, because cause it, it, it does seem like, like she's the one in control of everything. So that, that would have to mean that if he's going along with her plan, that, that he's, you know, the uh, the subordinate and, and not the controller and whatnot. So uh, I think uh, she encountered, because, you know, one of the things, and you know, from the comics, and this is relevant to what happened in this episode. Um, one of the stories from the comics involves uh, Wanda's kids um, being taken away from her because they were actually part of uh, Mephisto's soul. And um, you know, when when Wanda, you know, when Wanda lost her kids, it was because of them being reabsorbed back into uh, you know Mephisto's soul and. Um, it, it, that's definitely uh, something that uh, has been hinted at in, in the show be because, you know, not Quicksilver refers to the kids as Demon Spawn. And uh, uh, the whole thing about uh, the kids being part of Mephisto's soul has been said to be something that is, uh, from the comics, that is too ridiculous to be something that would be adapted in the MCU, you know, like... It's it's too far out there to, for them to do a straight adaptation of it. It's not grounded enough. And um, after giving it some thought, I kind of have to agree. Like, like they would have to do... If they want to do that storyline, then they'd have to do something similar to it, but not exactly that. So uh, I think, uh, you know, the fact that, that Wanda's kids are, are gone now... Um, is definitely hinting at them uh, not actually being Wanda's kids, even though they are, have been shown to have had uh, superpowers just like uh, Wanda herself. Um, so, so what I originally thought was that uh, Wanda created her kids herself, um, but uh, as to why uh, she had no control over them, uh, this, despite that, I. I wasn't sure of why, but uh, now that we know that, that Agatha has been behind everything all this time, I'm now starting to think that it was actually her that created Wanda's kids. And that's why, um, you know, Wanda had no control over them and, and why the kids were also able to control their age. Yeah, um, <laughs> Agatha Harkness is actually uh, not that... Uh, recurring of a character in, in the comics. Uh, she was originally introduced uh, as a babysitter for uh, uh, Franklin Richards, who is the son of Reed Richards, who is, you know, Mr. Fantastic at the Fantastic Four, you know. And uh, she, she uh, effectively is uh, Wanda's mentor in the comics, you know, teaching her how to control her, her powers and whatnot. And uh, she even... Uh, made Wanda forget about the fact that she uh, lost her kids due to them being part of Mephisto's soul in that story that I was just talking about. Um, uh, and that, of course, led to uh, another story where, where she got her memories back and then basically lost her mind from all of the grief that she suffered from, you know, remembering that she used to have kids and then losing them because they were part of Mephisto's soul. Um, so... She's a, yeah, she's not, she's a character that doesn't appear all that often, you know, she, she's more or less there and, and only appears every few once in a while, you know, 
whenever there's a, a story that needs her, but, but she's really not all that common in Marvel Comics at all. Definitely not. Um, which, you know, if you think about is in, in line with, uh, you know, how the MCU has used characters from the comics up to this point. You know, like Obadiah Stane is not really a character who appears all that much in the comics. You know, uh, Aldrich Killian doesn't appear that often in the comics. Um, what's another one? Whiplash, you know, he's another obscure character. So, you know, using uh, rarely used characters uh, from the comics is, is definitely uh, nothing new from the MCU. And uh, actually, um, is actually great um, for even people who are familiar with the comics because um, because they're so rarely used, um, we don't really know what to expect with uh, uh, how they're going to handle the, the, the characters being used uh, in anything MCU related. So, um, you know, be, because they haven't been around all, all that often, th there's definitely a lot more room for different interpretations and portrayals of these characters, um, excuse me, as opposed to more popular characters who have been used so often that we see multiple different versions of them now, so it's much harder to create a uh, different version for the movies to use and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think that's uh, everything that uh, I wanted to talk about for this episode. Um, I can't really think of much else other than... Um, Definitely where, where the show is headed is uh, the last two episodes are going to be, um, you know, more or less setting up uh, the beginning for Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. Um, if I were to guess, um, there's definitely going to be a big battle between Agnes and Wanda. Uh, but, but now that uh, we've seen Monica return to the Hex and, and uh, you know, she's capable of using her powers now, although... It, I don't think she realizes that she can fly just yet. Um, definitely, uh, Monica will, will learn to, to use the full extent of her powers uh, through the events of the last two episodes. Uh, and if not, you know, there's always uh, later MCU material, such as uh, the Miss Marvel show or even Captain Marvel 2. Although I think Captain Marvel 2 might be set at an earlier point in time in the MCU. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But... Uh, I fully expect uh, Maka to, to learn how to use her powers within the, the next two episodes. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to um, seeing how, how things play out in the, in the last two episodes. Because, again, we, we've just been introduced to, to Agatha as a villain. So we don't know more what her plans or motivations are or anything like that. So uh, to, to definitely learn why... Uh, she's doing all of this and, and you know how she got a hold of the dark hold in the first place and everything um yeah i i'm very excited and very much looking forward to uh, learning all of that uh in the next uh, few episodes um so yeah um if there's uh anything else that uh, you want to bring up before i uh, bring this discussion to to the to to a close uh, feel free to bring it up now, because uh, otherwise, um, I, I think I'll just end the stream here then.